Can you tell the difference between an amateurish performance and a more polished professional performance in this Schumann's Arabesque? If you are looking to sound more artistic, more polished, more professional at the pianist. There's one specific technique that is essential. And on today's video, I will show you what it is and how to do it with three simple exercises. I'm Margaret Wasik from the Golden Tone Technique and today I will show you how you can achieve shading, which is the difference between an amateur and a pro. Shading, creating nuance, creating magical moments has to do with the way that you touch the key. And the same way that if you put a three-year-old in front of a set of paints, they'll just go off on colors. Same thing is true when we start to learn piano before we have that distinction in our fingertips. So that's why the opening of Schumann's Arabesque could often sound for a beginner like this. You notice how the left hand is played just as strongly as the right hand. The same way as in painting, when perspective was introduced and painters could suddenly give the sense of a tree in the distance or in the forefront, same thing we have to create in piano playing. So for the artist or the painter, creating a sense of distance requires shading with colors, and it also requires creating these kinds of distances with light and proportion. And we must do the same thing at the piano. But for us, our toolkit isn't paint, it is sound and tone. And so how do we create dark and light, forefront and background shadings when we play the piano. Well, it has to do with how we press down on the note. The faster we go through the key, the stronger and more pronounced our sound is going to be. The slower you go through the key, the softer your tone will be. So we are really creating a sense of shading with speed. It's a very interesting concept because many times we think it has to do with weight. The more weight you put on a note, the more you bear down on it. Somehow, magically, it's going to produce a stronger sound. But then what happens to, for instance, the left hand, if it has to play a subtle accompaniment with an Alberti bass, it gets to be very heavy. It's very hard to control this. And without a clear sense of key depth, you run the risk of overdoing it all the time. And if you haven't checked out my video about the difference between arm weight and using velocity, please check out the video below for more information. It takes only three to five ounces to make the note. So if you're using weight, you're overdoing it. Therefore, it's very difficult to shade. It's like using a massive paintbrush to create all sorts of effects. You're just going to glop the paint on too much. Okay, so how do we control the amount of speed so that we can control the shading? Well, let's do this. For the next three exercises, we are just going to go to the basics of shading. This will be our sketch pad, and you can either use a C major scale for this, or if you'd prefer, you can use a five finger up and down. 
Okay, since the left hand has so much to do with keeping things shaded in the background, and since the left hand has the notes which usually get more weight because the strings are longer, they just vibrate in a stronger way, it overshadows the right hand, which is difficult because the right hand usually has the melody, like this. And so the left hand has to be super subtle and controlled. So this is how you practice it. Okay, so let's start with the left hand. Now, I'd like you to play a scale or five fingers up and down, but I'd like you to play a very light, soft staccato touch like this. Notice my fingertips are very rounded. play the same thing but let it be legato and smooth and also use your fingertips but imagine slicing through each note quickly. Don't feel a sense of heaviness on the bottom. Don't hit the bottom by all means. Please don't hit the bottom because that is a recipe for uh, ruining your sound. Make it sound very lush, very rich, very buttery. Sometimes to my students, I actually give them that visual. I imagine that there's a stick of butter and they have to think of slicing through this butter. Whereas in the hand that requires the softer touch, it's just a question of already being inside the butter, if that makes sense. You know, you're already within it. So with this exercise, let's now put the hands together. So remember, the left hand has that light staccato touch, whereas the right hand needs to play legato. And this, for a beginner student, is very hard because it takes a lot of brain activity to coordinate that the left and the right are doing two separate things. So let's be patient with ourselves. It takes time, but once you get it, it's incredible because then a whole world of new possibilities opens up at the piano and your artistry. So let's try this. to remember. Number one, this is so much a process of the ear. The ear must cling to the stronger hand. If you can just use that, then it'll be much easier to control the other hand. So we can only process a certain amount at any given time. So let the dominant hand and the dominant sound, the louder sound, lead you. So listen primarily to that. The second visual I'd like to share with you is imagine a stereo and imagine you have a knob and you can increase one channel. Let's say 10 is the highest, it'll go the loudest. And let's say the other channel, you can decrease it uh, as softly as you can, which will be like a one. So put your right hand or the dominant hand at 10 or eight, nine or 10 and the left hand at a one or a two level. You can imagine that you have these two levels and you're controlling them. Again, listen to the louder channel or the louder hand for this exercise. Okay, next exercise is just simply a continuation of what we've just done. So staccato helps to create that distance between the two notes because if one is playing louder and legato and the other one's softer and a detached staccato, well, it's easier to separate the two hands. So once you've done that, let's move on to exercise two. It's a variation of the first exercise. The difference here is that the left hand, instead of playing a light touch, a light staccato, turns to a half staccato or 
Portato. You say potato, I say portato, right? Okay, so what is portato? Portato is a kind of half staccato. So now you'll still have a detached sound, but unlike this first staccato, where it was very light and very crisp, now you're going to have simply a detached sound. Again, remember, this level this channel is set to like a two and this one to a one. Okay, so let's try it in a five finger exercise. So now you notice that it's getting closer. The right hand, because it is legato and overlapping, your left hand is doing a lot more connecting, but it's still detached. You're able to get them to the same ballpark. Work on that exercise until it feels very secure. Okay, now we've reached exercise three. And for the first two exercises, be patient. It will not happen overnight if you're a beginner, but once it happens again, then you've got it securely, and then you can move on to this exercise. Well, in this exercise, it's the third variation of the same. Here, we will now bring the left hand up to a full legato. And for this, I'd like to share with you one very important technique. This technique is called preloading. That's what a student of mine invented the term. I liked it a lot, so I'm gonna go with it. Preloading means now that you're playing legato in the left hand, you can actually, depending on your piano and the responsiveness of your piano, you can actually preload the note. That is, you don't have to press from all the way up. You can actually have your finger embedded already, a little bit in, even if it's just perhaps a centimeter. Why is that important? Let me show you from the above cam. You can have the finger preloaded and already silently inside the note. Notice how it's inside, it's not above it, it's inside. Again, that butter analogy, imagine being inside that stick of gooey butter. All right, so the left hand is preloaded. Try a five finger exercise with the fingers already in the keys, embedded in the keys, preloaded, so you're not ever lifting, you're not even coming from the surface, but from inside. So you're really close to what we call the resistance point. Again, I have a lot of videos about the resistance point and the importance of playing to the resistance point. there's a lot of overlapping and at first it'll sound a little muddy because you're truly overlapping notes in a scale but it's okay I think we're taught in general too much emphasis on the clarity in between the notes to the point that we get almost like almost too sterile with our playing where we feel like everything has to be exactly one note separated from the next uh, or individual notes rather than creating a lot of nice effects we have a whole world of effects to explore when we overlap tones and it's so much easier when you embed your fingers inside so embed preload and that way you can control your depth so much more easily that's the key because you're close to that resistance point where the note is born, and that way you can really control. So here we go. Let's try the both hands together, preload your left hand, have it overlap, stay very close inside your key, and let's try it with the right hand. when we take it into the Schumann arabesque, if we use that technique of preloading, we can actually get a lot of nuance in the left hand right off the bat. 
So the left hand has this filigree inner passage, which the right hand also is a continuation of. So it'll sound something like this. work within the piece. So to practice that extremely softly is a challenge, but preloading will be absolutely so beneficial for that. And now when we add the right hand, it's so much easier to let the right hand sing over that lattice work inside. video useful. What kind of piece are you working on that you'll try the preloading technique for shading? Perhaps you're working on a Schumann piece or a Chopin piece or Mozart. I mean the music is endless. You can use this technique for anything and instantly get more artistry because why? You're using more color. It's that easy. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial and for a 60 minute training, please be sure to check out my free tutorial that will get into the finger position and all the body positions for a natural technique and a beautiful golden tone and your artistry and virtuosity will soar. Thanks for joining and join me on the next practice tip video.